Is that where you're ready? Is Gunner going to make an announcement? That's right. We're live. We're recording. We're watching the screens. They're not yet working in the challenge, everybody, though. So we're going to, we are actually recording. So we'll, we can crop, we'll crop the parts where we look dumb. And we'll just include the good stuff. So that's, that's the plan, yeah. Peter is asking if you want to do an announcement. Talk to Peter. Go. Yep, we're good. Go. Everybody go. Clock is starting. Give him. Give him out. Just give it to them. Just give it to them. Go. Go, 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 go. <laughs> all right. So this is how this, this is working, all right? All the competitors are now networked. Uh, there is a challenge running on a, a, a tablet. It's a Nexus 9. And after a fair amount of technical glitches and difficulties, we have got everyone all working. So you can see behind us, you see all the different competitors' screens. Uh, we're going to be watching them as they each put in the USB key, and they get the instructions. So let's go ahead and pull up uh, LCBC now. Uh, the challenges arm are uh, 64, just like the qualifiers yesterday. So we had uh, a qualifying round. We took the four fastest teams. And the idea being that we wanted the same architecture for that that we wanted for this. We wanted them to have an idea of what they were going to expect. Uh, one of the staples of legit BSCTF this year has been many architectures. How many architectures are released so far? We, yeah, so, so this is, uh, th other than ours yesterday, yeah, so yesterday, the, the qualifying round, uh, we had one there, and we've got another one today as well. So we're going to watch them. They've got their, uh, their zip file. They're looking inside of it. Let's go back and check out everybody else. All right, so let's go ahead and kill our video. Nobody needs to be seeing our ugly mugs. Now that everybody knows us, uh, uh, we can briefly in introduce ourselves. Uh, I'm Cyphertex. I am HJ. Uh, HJ's with LegitBS. Uh, I'm uh, working with LiveCTF, and uh, LiveCTF got an invite out to come help at, at DEF CON and, and do a little mini LiveCTF inside of uh, the, the full game. So we're here. We're going to be commentating on uh, this game as it happens. We're going to go ahead and watch uh, the teams opening up the binder. They've already all got Ida open. That's a good sign. Uh, in fact, <laughs> Defcore, I like it. He's already got his payload. He's already working, working on his, uh, uh, his connection string. Yep, he's already got his connection string so he can get into the service. Uh, now the vulnerability, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about this vulnerability and what it is that they're going to be doing. So we've each we've looked at this. This is meant to be an easy vulnerability to find. Um, it's, it's Yeah, the difficulty in this one is, is the landing. It's a little bit tricky to do it. It's tricky because you've got a ROP payload. It's tricky because you've got uh, uh, some, a stir copy, which is, of course is not going to copy null bytes. So if you want your payload to have nulls in it, which it turns out you need on an ARM64 pointer, uh, you're not going to have an easy time of it with that. So that yeah, there's a couple of different ways we can do this. And in fact, I actually wouldn't be surprised if uh, other people would be uh, faster than us uh, at it, too. I, you know, when you test it, you can never really tell. Uh, you can time it. You can see how fast you think it goes. But you never know for, for, for certain. Yeah, exactly. So I love seeing all, uh, all the IDA. Of course, LCBC being the one that does not. We're just looking at a shell right now. So it looks like they're copying into a VM. I'm guessing a dynamic approach, making sure the network's working. All right, so he's probably got a VM. It's, he uh, copied it into a Q64 director, I think it was. So he's probably got... Yeah, I, I like though the different approaches, right? So, oh, Obstomp, nice. No Ida for LCBC. They're going in hardcore mode. This is this is excellent. So he's gonna be dumping out an Obstomp. Well, the binary is relatively small, but the problem is all the annotations that Ida gives you, right? Like the extra uh, stack frames and things like that. Yeah. So look at the current grading. It is interesting to note none of them immediately. So they all knew the architecture, and yet none of them are immediately running it in a VM, right? So one thing things they could have done are running it inside a QMU user. The first thing that, that I did when I got it was just ran it, poked at it, and then I got a sense of the menus, uh, it, and uh, got a feel for it. And I think you're amongst better uh, 
better company than I am, because if you look at these are the four best exploiters on the four fastest teams to solve the qualification round yesterday, and they're all in Ida first. So I think uh, that we've got one. Uh, ah, there we go. So Ricky, I, I, I'm not sure what the point. Maybe he was grabbing for something in particular. Uh, it looks like. It looks like, yeah, so Ricky from PPP is indeed playing with it, though. So he's actually got uh, got it up. Uh, and Send a bunch of days and see what happens. Well, they don't know, though, how easy the service is in advance. In hindsight, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll see what they end up doing uh, and whether they're finding as well. I think we've never had all four nights at the same time, but now we've got three at, this, at the same time. All right, so Defcore again. I like looking at everybody else's tools, too. So I haven't seen set you at zero, so I wonder if that's his own pwning package, if he has his own library uh, that he's using. And now we're no pwn tools yet, but I wouldn't be surprised. Ah, there we go. Look at somebody else. We've got our, and we ended up with our Sublime Text editors uh, on the top. Very nice. Yep. They already so they know they're gonna rob, so they're already pulling out those important pointers, like system, uh, like buffers that they have access to. So no ASLR on on the, the binary, but there but there is depth. There is hardware enforced depth. Exactly. Otherwise, they could just jump to their data on the, on the stack, and they could brute force the address. So in this case, they are gonna have to uh, use a rot payload. We gave them a hint again to give the audience a little perspective. We gave them a hint yesterday with the flag on that particular challenge that they were going to have to uh, that they were going to have to rop on, on this particular payload. So they knew that. Uh, and, and that's actually important though because it turns out QEMU user, if you just test it in there, which is the easiest way to test ARM64, may, uh, doesn't have hardware enforced uh, depth. So you'll actually be able to execute off this. It'll look like you have executable on stack when you don't really on the actual hardware. So it can be a little tricky. So I like seeing That's a, that's a good question. I haven't actually uh, run on this particular binary, so I'm not sure what it would have said. But there's, uh, 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 yeah, a couple of other checks. LCBCs. There we go. We're getting, I got to have a bunch of A's. So we're, we're fine tuning. We're testing the number of A's we need. Excellent. Building it into the payload. Yeah, I think it's just guessing uh, on the the lengths there until he gets it. Well, oh, he looks—he isn't Ida looking at it. Ah, but this one we do have a seg fall, so let's go ahead and check it over PPP. We've got uh, instruction pointer. We've got uh, yep. Uh, so Ricky, right now, now if I had to, it's hard when you're trying to gauge the speed and who's in the lead and who's not. There we go. There's our screenshot with everybody in Ida. Um, it's a little bit hard to say who's in the leads. I like Dex. I like Defcore's uh, uh, split shell and uh, payload, so he's already building up the payload. So while Ricky has, uh, ha R right, doesn't have the other pointers or the other exploit built that, that I saw, so we may have missed it. Um, I love, yeah, exactly. So we've already got system pointers from LCBC. We've got Defcore with a system pointer as well. Ode Sober, I've seen less from right now. I'm seeing uh, mostly Ida. So if, if I had to pick, I would say that Ode Sober is is in is in behind. Uh, the other the other three are each showing yeah some some strength. Now that said, uh, this is also the order that they were in before. So one, two, three, four was Defcore, LCBC, and PPP, and Ode Sober in the qualifier. That's right. They are. All right. It, what what I love to is I love as well is that Defcore apparently has had most of their binaries, if not all of them, solved by the same guy, the guy that we're watching. I heard as of yesterday, every one of their solves was one guy. So we're looking at. Uh, I'm not. No, I don't think it's a team captain. It's. This is a uh, yeah, but I'm I'm. You know, we like to think that that uh, CTF these days is a team sport, and you have to have a lot of different people. But superstars really still can carry a team. Yeah, yeah, and this and this is a good example of it where we can see. Oh, what are we looking at on LCBC over here? Uh, building up his rot payload, right? So he's looking there. Okay, so Defcore has not actually touched it in in uh, GDB at all. It's interesting to note. 
Other people are looking at it in a debugger. They're running it live. Defcore is right now pure static. All right, so again, this is the leading scorer in the entire CTF right now who has not even run it statically at all, or not even run it dynamically at all. So back to your, our earlier discussion about our, our different approaches. Uh, I love seeing the brief Google. I think they know they're on camera, though. So if I had to suspect, I wouldn't want to show my ignorance too much. Uh, yeah, and unfortunately, we've got a little bit of a technical glitch on PPP. We can only see the center of the screen. Um, and the, 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 it's not quite running or quite correctly. Uh, so I am being told from one of my spotters that, uh, that they're scripting off screen, that outside of where we can, we can see in those, in those windows uh, and the views there in the upper left is uh, his payload is being developed. Oh, that was nice of him bringing up in the center screen. So Ricky uses, uh, of course, uh, uh, like a Flux-like uh, window manager, manager uh, TWM, or one of the other uh, very uh, uh, sparse uh, decorators. So zero days sober. Let's go back and, and pop into here. Looks like we're uh, copying it into a VM. You know, I don't like to say typing speed is the most important thing. It's not. You can be great and not a fast typer, but I feel like it also, a sense of urgency in some of these speed runs, it certainly helps. It's not a good sign. Now, now that said, it's also easy to make mistakes when you're going fast. So you do have to be a little bit careful. Let's hop back out and check out everybody else. Where yeah, I'm really liking both. Uh, now, I like to see. It's, it's hard for us to see where PPP is at. We know he's got a little bit of script there in the upper left. We, we knew EFPC, exactly. And uh, let's flip back over to DEFCORE. Back in Ida, but there's the payload. Oh, it's coming along nicely. Now, it's interesting, though, that the comment was that DEFCORE has not been in GDB, but in his Sublime text, he's got a bottom... Uh, a bottom section looks like he's running it live, so I'm not sure if he's, or he may have he may have just copied. I think he just copied and pasted the text because he wanted to match the strings probably in his payload. So I'm guessing that's what he's got there. Oh no, it looks like he's actually running it. I it, I think he's, I think he's running it there. It's 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 a little bit hard to tell. So we did, yeah. We, in our sort of trial run, we found a particular ROP gadget. Uh, there are multiple ways, of course, uh, to do it. Uh, but what, what we're seeing now is them highlighting registers, looking for particular um, particular registers. Uh, no, I think at this point he's still trying to get an understanding of where he's at, what his is, what is stack frame looks like. Uh, at some point, though, soon, probably, given we're about only 12 minutes in, which is pretty fast given the payloads, they know what they needed to do, they're making good progress. At some point soon, what I expect to see is they've got an instruction pointer, they're going to overwrite that with a uh, with, with system pointer, and then they're going to use, use uh, at that point, the only other thing they need is X0. They just need control of one register to set the argument to system to a string that they control. And there is a, a static string location that they can use for that. And, and they've essentially won at that point. All they have to do is run dot slash win. So on the qualifier, there was a flag file uh, that they had to cat to get the flag back. Uh, in this round, all they have to do is run win. And they're going to get a beautiful animation. It's going to take over the screen and show us uh, that they've won. It's a 3D animation. We'll show everybody on the stream as well. Uh, what that looks like, uh, but first they have to do it. And each of them are using different binaries. We have different win scripts that they run, and so we'll see an animation for just for their team uh, when, when it triggers. If there is a single gadget, if there is a single gadget, uh, that's that's the question. Um, we used a single gadget twice in the, the current proof of concept we used to test it. So there was one gadget that we used at slightly different offsets. Uh, and the first time, we were able to get control of X, X0, get the, the argument that we wanted in there. And the second time through, we were able to, to trigger the actual uh, the system call with it. Well, actually, excuse me. It was an intermediate register. So first, we got X16 and then used a, a move from X16 into X0. A, X Right, and so if you see an X, it's 64. If you see a W, and this is a little bit new. Not a, not a lot of people have worked on ARM 64 yet. I think X64, people are used to that nowadays. ARM 64 is still a little bit new, so it's exciting to see how, how everybody does. Uh, IDA does not great with it, for example. It's still not perfect at identifying local stack frames. Uh, and it's good. Yeah. It can be a little tricky, and that's, that's where trusting your tools can be hard. You have to, to a certain extent, but uh, then eventually you get to the point where you know something's wrong and you have to go back and double-check your, uh, your assumptions. 
So let's step back. Uh, let's take a look at the whole field and, and see where we're at. Uh, one thing that, that DefCore has not realized yet, DefCore is trying to send null bytes in his payload. Yeah, so let's get That's what we got our spotters giving us good, uh, good feedback from the field. Stir, right, so there is an F gets, so that's probably what he's saying, but the F gets goes into a buffer that stir copy copies out of. And so he's not going to be able to get null bytes into that payload. His pointer, direct pointer over it won't, won't work. So what we're looking to see, there's, there's two ways that this could go down. First, a team could do a partial overwrite, which is your approach on it, is to do a partial overwrite to do one gadget. But that's kind of a one shot. You've got to have a, the perfect gadget to trigger what you want or maybe to get you something else. Um, or maybe you're going to jump back into main or the, you know, the, the main binary in some other interesting way to cause it to do. Um, uh, that's a good question. I don't remember offhand what, uh, yeah, we, we, uh, we, we're flying at the, the mercy of our, uh, of our players. Now this is interesting. What are we doing here? We've got a, the smallest Python font in the world there. I, I, I will say that it does look, I would love it to be a comfort behind victory and, and no day sober to, to do it. I guess they're just living up to their name. Uh, zero days sober, so clearly they're still drunk. Um, they're still doing it. Let's go ahead and check in on PPP down here. Yeah, unfortunately his scripting is, is a little bit off screen. It's hard for us to see where he's at. Yeah. If he actually ends up winning, we may just know because uh, the win script is triggered. We may not know before that because the, of where his payloads go. And I did see a comment there about his, uh, his, his stir copy. Uh, why don't we go ahead and ask in there our, our spotters about PPP and their status and see whether uh, if, we can, if they know any information about their, their, um, about their script that's off screen. And I'm, I'm not sure if that's in the stream or in the original capture. So we'll go ahead and check back. And let's take a look at LCBC. So LCBC is pumping in uh, by still. I'm not quite sure what we're looking at here. We've got. Uh, so when somebody, right, so when somebody uh, runs this, and the instructions, I might add, that when they pulled up originally, uh, the instructions tell them specifically, all you need to do is run dot slash win. And the current working directory of the program you're exploiting and we've already told them it's ROP, which means they know right away exactly what the goal is. I exactly. So there's four separate binaries, each with a different connection password. So that password that we saw DefCore pull out at the very beginning and put into his script, we'll see if he pulls that up again. The password that he pulled is different per team. Uh, it says let me in and then a, a three-digit number. So each one of those were different. All right? and so they couldn't connect to the other team's binary, but that also means then when they, when they ex exploit it successfully, and they run dot slash win. And it's already hard coded to trigger the animation for their team. So we'll see a trigger on the device itself, uh, the actual uh, the actual win for that team. Well, let me in one eight one. Uh, we can see there is the uh, is the connection for DefCore, uh, for example. And we're we'll looking at the payload. So we did. Yeah. One of the things that we have to be careful of is we wanted four separate binaries, one for each team, because we want them to be able to not interfere with each other and be connecting to different accounts, have different win scripts. Uh, but you don't want to change the pointers. You don't want to make it fair and have a recompile that accidentally the compiler moves something around. Uh, so we kind of did it uh, the cheap way, and we just pulled up a hex editor and changed just those three bytes. So as long as those three bytes themselves weren't used in a gadget that somebody would, would want to use. Um, Excellent. We've got some applause in the background. So... It is, it is also interesting to note, too, if anybody is looking at hex rays, uh, or no, of course no one's looking at hex rays because we're ARM64. I don't even believe it's, uh, it, it's, it's possible there yet. So uh, they are handicapped a little bit from what they might be used to. Uh, it's well, and on this, on, this challenge, on this CTF especially, for DEF CON finals this year, uh, so many architectures, many of which are not supported. Uh, it's... It's a little unfair, yeah. That, that's, uh, in fact, even IDA itself, without having hex rays, is a little bit, a little bit expensive. So again, so DefCore is running it, uh, and he's he's not doing it totally blind in the sense that he's running his payload, looking at the output, but he hasn't popped it in GDB. He hasn't actually gone in to look at why his payload isn't working. It's hard to argue with success yet. Yeah, we'll see if he gets beat here. Maybe we can say in hindsight, 2020. Um, but he, he does now realize that he, once he's got the overwrite triggered, he needs to actually quit. So one of the things that we need to talk about the audience 
is that overriding the, the menu system we saw there was there's a lock status, a greeting, change greeting, a display greeting. Uh, the vulnerability is not actually triggered until they exit back out of the whole menu. Right? So what they're going to have to do is trigger the overwrite with change greeting and then quit. And that'll actually trigger. That's the 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 you know return address that they've overwritten. Now on, on ARM, it's not actually um, stored quite the same way it is on uh, uh, on x86. They use uh, x29 and x30 as a link register and as a the uh, local stack. Yeah, I I exactly register. So it's a little bit different than than what folks are used to. Uh, X30, yeah, yeah, X30, exactly. Yeah, it's essentially essentially a jump to X30, and I think and Ida is, is helpfully telling us that it's a, it's a RET, uh, but functionally what it really is, yeah, I I exactly. So Ida is making things a little bit easier uh, on us. Uh, and that's also why we see at the... All right, so let's go back to Ricky. He's uh, hot back into Ida. He's looking, he's thinking. I don't know. Yeah, it's, let's see what he's looking at. So, oh, this is interesting. So we're actually seeing LCBC uh, do a fine for a stir copy. There we go. That's a good sign, though. It's a good sign that um, we weren't sure that DefCore had actually found the stir copy. So to see that LCBC does indeed know it, because binary is not stretched. We left symbols. We 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 wanted to leave that in there, right? Uh, we wanted to make that. Well, that's maybe something they, they could have looked at. For for that matter, they could have looked at just the imports. Uh, and just look at the list of all the imports to see unsafe functions. That might have been just scroll down there on that function list, and that might have pulled it up. That's true. That, there, there uh, is, is one as well that's into a, a, a buffer that doesn't have any kind of unsafe use to it. Yeah. All right. So let's step back. I do. This is interesting too to, to note the different approaches. One of the things I'm most excited to see doing this kind of a live CTF, where we can see. The different uh, uh, the different players and the different perspectives is how they each each play. So we've got different editors. Uh, we can see you know of course they're they're all doing uh, different approaches. We've got uh, the plain text purist approach that, that Ricky's got. Uh, we've got sublime text between Defcore and LCBC. Ode Sorber Ode seems to be kind of more of a command line junkie, um, but we haven't seen also a whole lot of structure. I, I do like that uh, Defcore immediately went into writing his exploit. Right, the first thing he did was create. He knew his connection string, so he was already when he found the bug, he's going to be ready just to throw it immediately. Which, oh, I don't know if I'm impressed or disappointed, one of the two, because I, the, some of those libraries can be really helpful. Uh, although maybe in this, in this case it's not. I don't know how many are good at finding ROP gadgets on ARM64. And if you weren't familiar with it, I'm sure there will, but the point is, if you're not familiar with it, if your library, maybe they have a library they're used to, but it doesn't doesn't work on this particular one. So let's go ahead and. Oh, excellent! Yeah, I'm not surprised. Ponytools is a really powerful, yeah, a really powerful library. All right, so where are we at here? Let's go back. I see actually a GDB. I like looking at GDB to see where they're at. So we've got a breakpoint uh, that was set. It looks like uh, PPP has got a breakpoint inside the change greeting function. They actually want to see, they know that, the, that there's an overflow occurring inside change function. They know they're not triggering it until they exit. And so he's breakpointing to look and see what the stack looks like, uh, what control he has. So again, he's looking at X29, so he's looking at that local stack frame. And we can see the 41s, we can see his A's. Now the question is, who are we going to see? Uh, again, we mentioned earlier, we actually didn't get to finish the conversation. There's sort of two ways of doing this, right? So the one way is by that single shot, exact match, uh, function pointer overwrite that somehow is the perfect gadget. That could exist. It's there, yeah. Assuming it's there, we don't know, uh, but it requires you to have the, uh, uh, that null byte that's trailing in your stir copy line up either with the null byte and the original pointer that was there, or you can shave off one more byte and go smaller, but that's unlikely to be a real pointer. Um, so they can do a partial overwrite on that, uh, that saved X30.
if if they're able to trigger the overwrite with X0 still pointing to anything that contains it, but now in this case, though, I don't think that's the case. I think X0 comes out null or it comes out otherwise uncontrolled. Uh, it's it's not uh, pointing to anything useful. Um, but that's actually another good uh, example of a, a technique that would work on a different binary. You know, some of the binaries, you could get the program into a consistent state. In fact, the previous challenge for the qualifiers had a way to exploit it, that that's how it worked. Essentially, you were able to uh, use the existing functionality there to get a value you controlled, there was a stir to L called in your input, and so you could put the beginning of your payload, you could put a digit, some digits, and then uh, anything that was a non-digit, and then that would be turned into the return value of the function. That would get, it get triggered at, after your overwrite. Uh, exactly, because intentionally, exactly, so they were able to still get the value they controlled in into X0, but also be able to get the longer buffer overflow that, that came out of that function as well. So that was a fun one. Maybe we'll go ahead and put that one uh, online for folks later to, to look at, and uh, maybe somebody else will, will live cast it, and we can see their, their walkthrough of it as well. So let's look at uh, LCBC, and, and we've got pointers. So we've got our buffer. It was a good start. I, I, I definitely feel like we haven't seen anybody yet do the other approach. And the other approach that we're going to be looking to see is where they realize that that stir copy is really hurting them, right? Because they've got an F gets into a large buffer and then a stir copy into the buffer that they're actually overriding. There's a little bit of a problem, too. We're getting a, a note from one of our spotters that uh, Ode Sober over here, I believe, is creating his buffer. Unfortunately, he's misaligned. He's still so used to 32 that he's only got four characters for one of his, 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 his arguments, right? Of course, if it's a 64-bit stack, he's got to have eight bytes, he's got four bytes, uh, so he's going to be misaligned, uh, and that's going to put him off track. We'll see it. Uh-oh, DefCore, we just missed it. I th oh, wait, maybe, we, maybe we can catch it here. I think uh, DefCore is, is about to run or just did run a kill-9 Python. He may have had a lot of extra shells, and we've all done that. <laughs> we've all had those moments, especially in a race. And this is, it's hard to underestimate, knowing that somebody is watching you uh, is nerve-wracking and trying to have your screen uh, in ha trying to have your screen yeah exactly but that make what makes you so nervous that you might do it again so LCBC it looks like still has not found the null byte right so what we're really looking for the first team that really sees I think they have all the most of the right pieces now all right they have most of the right pieces they they know where the overflow is um, they've got the the pointers that they need uh, we're still looking for them to see, oh, he's right there. See that stir copy. See that stir copy and realize the implications. That's what he needs to see. Exactly. And it, it terminates and stops copying at that point. So the destination, right. So the trick is if you wanted to get null bytes into this stack, right, because the stir copy is overriding the stack. It's overriding all this extra data. If we need to get extra null bytes there, call the function multiple times. So you're going to need a little bit of a loop. Uh, you're going to need to run it for 400 characters, uh, and then 399, 398, 397. If you keep moving it in, right, you're going to be putting those null bytes. Or wherever you want a null byte, you're going to have to write a new uh, payload. So we're actually going to have to see a little bit of, uh, little bit of Python uh, for them to build up that structure. Again, unless they can get that magic one shot, I'm expecting, though, that they're going to have to do it uh, by, by backing it off. And, uh, and I, don't know if, I don't know if that's the, the window blind technique or exactly what we want to call that. Let's go ahead and hop in. I love seeing it again. There it is. GDB. It's our one good view. We get to see it in GDB. Let's see what he's doing. So he's got a break and read. He's got a script. So this is a good example of a, a, a technique a lot of folks are using, right? So they're actually going to have a separate uh, debug GDB script. So they're going to have all their breakpoints in a separate file. Instead of changing the command line, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a good habit to be in, and I don't always remember to do it. Sometimes I'm still, like, so it looks like we got a partial override. Yeah, we'll see, and I would love for him to be successful and to actually uh, finish it up that way. Absolutely. Now, we're about 30 minutes into it. I will point out that the author of this challenge was able to solve it in about the same amount of time that we're looking at right now, right now. Of course, he knew where the bug was, so he didn't have to spend that first five, 10 minutes looking for the bug. He also knew right off the bat that that stir copy was gonna be a part of it, so he was able to kind of skip ahead past all that. But uh, he was able to get, um, uh, he, he was able to still get the, 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 the ROP gadget and write the, the, the payload that would actually put the nulls in the proper places. Now, PBB has got his partial offset uh oh, this is interesting looking. Might have figured it out. I'm seeing. 
Yeah, it's looking good. Now the original the original uh, breakpoint we saw had system where it would look like just one partial overwrite, but it's possible he's getting closer. So that's great, great progress there. Good progress, getting a system pointer. I'm not see. So it might be. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the partial overwrite. So let's go back and look here. Definitely being hit by the nulls. I think we've seen the battle of the nulls. I don't see, he's st he does not have the, uh, the null encoding trick figured out. All right, so now we've got Odeus Sober just now, just now, definitely behind. I, I hate to say it, but it's true. We're just now got our first beginning of a script. He's got a, a Metasploit or a De Bruyne sequence from, uh, from Pump. Now, don't get me wrong, they'd probably still be me. All right, I, I struggle with this one. It took me a lot longer than this. And the, the, so they, they, it's just only in comparison to some of the other teams do we, do we get to say that they're behind. And again, everybody hopes a good come from behind victory can happen. Let's go check back in with LCBC. Absolutely. Same kind of uh, same situation. I'm not seeing any difference at this point. Um, in fact, I'm actually not even seeing uh, the exit. No, because you know what, again, I don't... I'm not seeing any, uh, oh, he does have his common line. He knows he has to exit. There he is. He can put it in now. There's the five. Yep. Yeah. So he's putting it in now. So he knows he needs to exit to actually trigger the crash. Let's go ahead and go back to PPP, who seems like they might be in the lead. We'll see. Uh, let's flip back over here. Okay. So I mentioned earlier, so that one of those, those single shot tricks that people might be able to pull off, it might, it might actually work. We don't know for sure, is to rot back into main. So you can actually jump back in, depending on the state of the registers, depending on what you've overwritten, jump back into main, and maybe you've got some interesting control. Maybe you can get uh, execution go down a different path. Maybe, for example, you could get that, that F gets to read somewhere else. You can use an existing. So th there's different types of rot payloads that I would, I would sort of call it. And, you know, the kind of classic um, build up your small gadgets to move things around into registers and to trigger, you know, call the function you want with exactly the register control you want. Uh, and then there's other kind of broader ones where you're reusing entire functions uh, more frequently, you know, and... Um, it, reusing functions inside the original program, not just in libc. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Sort of the difference between trying to find a move SD or trying to find a full mem copy that's already going to pull the arguments in the, in, in the right the right way. So Defcourt looks like he's going to be trying to jump back into the main of the function and see what happens there. We're still not seeing the null check. Yeah, quad pack, I'm sure. Yeah, a lot of people actually, I've seen the same, the same uh, alias used on a number of folks. Usually there'll be a one-liner at the top of the, uh, the application where they're going to go ahead and define that uh, to actually do their packing for them. That's a good catch. So at this point, at this point, I definitely think we have to say the PPP has got the edge, but it can take a while. It can take a while to, sorry about that, wrong click. All right. So it looks like, Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so Defcore was jumping back into main. He's going to get the password. Yeah, so he's getting the password again because he's jumping back into main. But does it do anything useful? Right. That's the, that's the question. Is it actually going to get anything useful out of it? I'm looking at PPP right now. I really want to hone in on this and see where we're at. We're not going to be able to see the full script payload. Man, I've heard that, uh, that Ricky can be hard to follow, but uh, I believe it now when I see it. I'll this is the downside to somebody who uses a, 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 a hotkey-based uh, window manager is they can flip around faster than anybody. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the overall complexity of this challenge. If you were going to rate this challenge kind of on the traditional DEF CON scale of difficulty, certainly the, the source code, if you were to look at it, you, you wouldn't even make it 100 points, right? This would be relatively easy. Now that said, I sh it, and that's and that's exactly the time we wanted this to be easier. All right. Now, yeah, and it, exactly in a qualifier event or a bigger team Jeopardy kind of style round, when that architecture comes up. That guy that's the expert in it will, will hop out and do it. Although I will say in this instance, we did give them overnight. They had a little bit of a hint, so they had a chance to either study up or they had a chance to send somebody else. 
Although that's hard, you got to choose because they had to know, do they spend time working on other challenges or do they prepare for this unknown? It can be hard to say. There's a lot of game theory kind of behind how you spend your time, especially for the smaller team. All right, let's go ahead and hop back out here and look at everybody to see where we're at. Def course back at everybody's still back in Ida. So I'm going to make a hypothesis. When they're getting close, we're not going to see Ida. Right? Like, I think that as they get close, we'll see GDB. Right. Yeah, so the, the gadgets are the one, the last remaining bit. So when they're getting closer, we're going to see gadgets that they're going to be looking for. Uh, the gadget hunt could take them a while, actually. It's entirely possible uh, that looking for the right gadget uh, takes them a bit. It, it took me a little bit. I looked for quite a while. I wasn't able to find the right one. In fact, I was able to actually control every register except for X0. And so I had just stopped looking at it, and so I spent like two hours doing it. And then I, I had to go off and do something else. And so that was where I got hung up at, at, on that particular stop. Then all I had to come back was find another pivot to get now given those registers. So yeah, I, I, uh, unlike on uh, x86, we're used to EAX, for example, uh, being used as the return value in, uh, in ARM64. Uh, you're not going to see uh, as much of that happening, presumably. Or, or maybe you are, and we just I just missed the gadget. It's entirely possible as well. All right. Yeah. So one of the, uh, one of the comments being made here about DEF CORE is that uh, we, we've seen a lot of different approaches. If you actually watch uh, Ricky versus GeoHot and some of the earlier live CTFs, uh, Ricky tends to be more methodical. And Geohot tends to have the spaghetti approach. He likes to throw what he can on the wall and see what sticks, right? He's constantly kind of trying a bunch of different things. And so the comparison was just made. Defcore looks a little bit more like Geohot than a Ricky. And, um, and that kind of makes sense, too, because, again, his first approach was open the file up, very first thing, start creating the exploit, start creating the payload so he could poke it, poke it, poke it, poke it constantly. I think it's the right approach. I think it is. And it's hard to say, and that kind of came down to the luck and, yeah. That's that, and that's exactly what it comes down to. If you if you're trying a bunch of approaches, but because you weren't methodical, you missed that stir copy, for example, and you're still not able to see uh, how you need to create your payload. Let's go ahead and look back over here. You know, for as slow as we have said Odin Sober has been, I wouldn't say he's actually very far behind necessarily, because everybody else is kind of hung up at the same point right now. It's still possible for him to uh, to make his way in here. So he's got, uh, I, I do like how he's documenting his ROT payload for us. It's very convenient. Now, the problem he's going to have is he can't actually overwrite with nulls in his pointers, right? So again, those nulls are going to are gonna get him. It's so much easier to, it's so much easier. Oh, is he looking in libc for binistage? Well, and actually, so this is actually a, a binistage wrapper. This is actually worth talking about. Uh, we wanted this binary, it's running on the Android platform, but we wanted to make testing easier. So when we uh, created it, we actually created a wrapper for system that overloads the default libc system. And it will actually call the appropriate binSH or system binSH depending on what platform you're on. So this allows you to test it in QEMU user on Linux, but then also on, on an Android Linux, which is still kind of a Linux kernel, but has enough differences in the file system where binSH isn't in the same place. So that was something that, that uh, Rusty, the author of this particular challenge, came up with to sort of make things a little bit easier. Again, we don't want them fighting with silly stuff like where is Where's the shell? You know, we want them to be able to focus on the actually generating the exploit. S Go ahead. Right. So that's not me exactly. It's not meant as a ROP target. It's really meant more as a hint. So now they know that bin sh is uh, where it's at. So if they want to set up their own command line call to to, to system with particular arguments. Um, they can they can they can do that uh, using the one that we provided them. At least that's that's the hint. The other way you could tell is if you just Google uh, Android shell. The first thing in the first few, I think the fourth result, somewhere in the first early results, is a page explaining slash system slash bin slash sh. Yeah, exactly. Uh, which was new to us too, because this was the very first time that any of us had had uh, done any uh, Android exploitation similar for the 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 those of us that made the challenge. Uh, but that's I think what makes CTFs uh, a lot of fun actually. So the same thing, those darn null bytes. We're seeing everybody stuck on the nulls. 
And now that's where I think a good example of looking at it in a debugger really helps you. So in terms of the static approach versus the dynamic approach, um, you could certainly see it with a static. You can see the fgets and find the stir copy and see how that's going to impact things. Uh, but nothing beats just looking at it in debugger and saying, wait a minute, I sent 300 bytes. Why are there only 200 here? Oh, uh, there was a null at 200 bytes in, and it looks like it didn't send any more. There must be something cutting me off. And of course, you're going to look for the stir copy of that. All right, so this is, yeah. So he's, we're looking at, looking at, looking at, there we go. Okay, so maybe, I would love to see the comeback. This could be it. This could be LCBC coming back. If LCBC can, can successfully create this, uh, this payload. You know what, I, I got to give LCBC style comments, though, because his uh, comments in Ida, his comments in his code, are for him and for us. I don't know if he's actually doing it for us or if it's mostly for him. Well, that, that's all right. Well, if, if, even if he's doing it for himself, uh, if, he, if he's doing it for us, setting X0 as the destination, right, there we go. So he is, he is tracking it. All right, let's go ahead and hop back out and see what everybody else is up to. Mostly still Ida. Now, again, the bottom two are in our shells. We've got Odia Sober. Testing his payload out. YOLO, of course, is his payload, you know, which is which is indicative of his approach too. Just throw it in there and YOLO. See what see what happens. Tagline or yeah. Ah, uh, that's true. So I guess is is that associated? I didn't really catch the connection between. The, oh, it's the MSLC marijuana leaf I got. I didn't. The YOLO marijuana leaf was uh, a new. Uh, uh, yeah, that's true. Laid back, exactly. You only live once. Go for it. All right, so we're looking at the pointers that are coming out. Waiting to see that. Uh. So, oh, uh, you know what? Just looking at the, so the comments here, I see multiple stir copies from top down. Just that bit of a hint is enough is enough to give us a hint that I do believe PPP knows about the, uh, the null bytes. Um, they found the PC offset on the stack. So right now... That's right. We saw that earlier, so that we thought we 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 thought that Ricky's got it. So stepping back out, I think that I'm still going to call Ricky in the lead. I think PPP is still looking like it. Although uh, we've got a bin sh, that's not going to work again, right? So Defcore has not has not uh, has not uh, bin sh will be unfound. Although we will see it and laugh on the server as we're maintaining the uh, the, the systems. Uh, we'll see it. We'll see it come out. All right, let's hop back on out here. What do we got? Still looking for gadgets. 42 minutes. I am. I am. My, my sort of guess, if I had to put money in the pool. Yeah, let's go back and look at uh, We might have a... a a small error in the payload here. So we've got that comment that uh, it's loading pointers. Uh, it's actually the, the LDR X0, X29, X10. Yep, yeah. Right, we know. Now, that said, if we're... So his, his, his gadget here is a good gadget, right? It looks like he's, he's going to get himself uh, X0, and then he's going to get two more, uh, the, the next stack and the next return address, and then he's going to write that. That's a, good, that's a good gadget to be used. That gadget probably would be enough. Uh-oh. I see in the next range. This might be the generating the nulls. Ode Sober, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it. We both would. We both would. This may come down to the wire. So I'm looking, it, it, it's possible this, this gadget's enough. So it's hard to tell for certain, but I... An offset of X29, which is the local stack frame pointer, which he controls. And he's gonna go ahead and, and then, uh, yeah, so that LDP X29, X, the, uh, the, the LDP X29 X30 is really just the normal epilogue at the end of the function. It's just gonna pull off, uh, pop the, the return, uh, the, the, this, you know, the, Exactly, into link register, and then it's going to pop the, the stack frame. So that's a normal, normal epilogue there, but that, uh, that load uh, X0 is 
looking tempting. Okay, so, yep, he knows it. He knows his nulls. He's building his payload. I don't know if he's going to work. If, he, if this system, if his gadget, and if his uh, construction here now is good, he might actually be in the lead. This could be a close race. Let's go back over to PPP. If only we could see PPP's... Uh, it is worth mentioning we had a, we had a late start today. Uh, unfortunately, we had a lot of difficulty. PPP had a, a laptop with VGA and DVI or DisplayPort. DisplayPort wasn't working. We eventually were able to get over to VGA, but it was it took a lot of uh, cable swaps and machine swaps and a lot of extra stuff. So we're just happy to see anything on this machine because for a while there we thought we would see see nothing. Exactly. Oh, it looked like uh, there was some Googling. The Googling was for ARM64 op, which I had, I yeah, you know, I would have had to Google for it, too. Uh, there we go. Uh, it's got gadgets already. That, that, was, that was pretty fast from, uh, uh, yeah, Rob Gadget. Yeah, Rob Gadget. Is it, dot, uh, is it dot .pl or something? .pi is one of the, yeah, one of the, it might actually, maybe there's one. I've seen somebody use one that was Pearl, but uh, all right, we're looking good. We're looking close. So let's see, LCBC though. At this point, we're looking at three and four. We're looking at PPP, and we're looking at Odes Sober with the head start. And again, because we see them with those with those null bites, they're able to. It is it is ironic that teams that qualified one and two for this spot uh, are the furthest away right now uh, from figuring out what they need to do. Now, I see him creating a function here. That might be a good sign. If he's actually taking his data and turning it into a, a function, it might be because he wants to... Uh-oh. Uh, it is. It is. I, I, oh, we'll see. We'll see. Oh, I reserve judgment for now, but it's possible he's starting to build his, his uh, ladder uh, to be able to put those nulls into place. This could be a photo finish. I'm liking this. Excellent. Yeah. So it was uh, it was named Overflow right over there, and then so the extra. Oh, it's looking good. So he's writing well. He's gonna iterate over it. That's right. He actually he's doing it eight bytes at a time, which is not how I would have done it. Um, but it certainly makes sense, right? Because you're you're uh, not the, the the well, not necessarily. It won't. You'd have to do more than that. You really want to do byte at a time. I don't think that's gonna work. Yeah, that's true. it's certainly safer, and I think it makes the, the programming a little bit more straightforward. The problem with the 8-byte one is that if you have null bytes by themselves in the middle of your payload, that's where you won't be able to do it, because um, uh, if they don't happen to align on, a, on an 8-byte boundary, I don't think that's going to work. So, But he's at least got the start, so I'm going to put it at uh, LCBC still behind. He saw the stir copy earlier, but right now, not seeing it. Uh, let's look into PPP. We haven't checked in with them in a while. Still seeing 41s, though. I don't see any uh, gadgets unless that's what we got at the top of our stack. He's got a little uh, problem with his harness there, trying to attach to it after it runs. So it looks like he may, he has an entire VM. It is worth uh, pointing out he's got an actual VM that's made. So some people are running in QMU user, uh, but PPP has got it actually uh, fully up in a VM. That's a good question. I'm not sure. I, it could be Q, it could be QMU system, could be a uh, whole QMU system, uh, ARM64, uh, just not QMU user. So my approach is to use QMU user. Um, I am seeing a null byte in the middle of his payload, so this is a good sign. But that was yeah, it's convenient to let us know. I'm still wondering. They're coming up close now. We're also running up on the last 10 minutes of the day, so we'll have to figure out what happens whether we keep this uh, keep this running. It uh, looks like we got, we've got a note from the organizers. Excellent. We get to keep going. So the rest of the CTF will end, but this team will keep going. We will let them go until the first one that solves it. Yeah, it's worth it. These points directly translate. Uh, it, it evades the zero sum. That is a, those are some valuable points. More valuable because they can't can't actually lose us. That's clever. They appreciate that. Well, that's good, and we want them to take it seriously. The goal is for them to really put their best people to put the most effort into it. 
Uh, and that's what we're watching them do. So Zero Days Sober, we've got our loop. Scanning over the, uh, the payload. That'll work, actually. That's actually, in fact, the same letter I used when I wrote my, my little ladder code as well. Exactly. You've got to use the, the capital A's. So essentially, everything up to the, the null that you're writing at the end of your payload, you replace all the previous nulls with A's. And then you back off slowly. And then so, so the only A you're writing is the one at the end of your, at, at the end of your, your buffer. There may be. Oh, I don't know. I'm a lazy hacker, and that, that was my approach too. I'm not sure because I, I, you, you have to. I think that's you could also. There's a couple ways you can do it. You could do a random. I think you can actually do a random string of A's all the way up to the null at the end if you're just writing nulls. As long as you then, well, the last byte would have to be right. You could do you could do it single byte at a time actually. The really easy way without a whole lot of logic, logic behind it would be literally write the the payload one character at a time. Yeah. The it, now I should point out it'll take longer to run, but it will be more. It's just as reliable, presumably. And l easier code, yeah. So certainly in, in this particular case where the faster coding matters, uh, we'll see it. So Zero Day Sober is looking very close. Yeah, so he's pulling up his ROP gadgets. All right, we're looking, at, we're looking at the state of our registers here without his sober. Excellent. Okay, so let's go ahead and look back at Defcore. Sub SP. So he wants to be able to, to realign his stack. Oh, excellent. That's a, that's a great idea. That's a great gadget. I hadn't thought of that. That's a great point. So Defcore might be able to pull. So his. It, you're unlikely to get a return right afterwards. Yeah. Misalign, right? I love wrapping on x86 because those variable width instructions means yeah exactly. If you got a. Yeah, it, you can reuse it as different things. Now, you do have that a little bit on, on ARM32 between ARM and thumb where you can offset it. I'm not sure how ARM64 behaves, though. Actually, I haven't. S there is no thumb switching. There's no. Sw yeah, uh, excellent. So, in that case, what you see is what you get. There are no other gadgets than those that are in the program. And I guess it makes it easier, yeah, to, to, to know you can either do it or you can't. So, we're not really sure. PPP is. Look like they're making good progress. And it looks like we've got a break point over here in Otis Sober. Single stepping into system. So he's trying to call our system wrapper function. And again, this is the one that we wrote that's in our challenge binary. It's not a called system. Which, if you can figure out a way to use it, he's more than welcome to. Maybe you can jump into an offset of it where some of the registers he already controls are, are then going to be used. Uh, That's a good point. They came so quickly through the instructions, they might have actually. So it's possible people are working on getting themselves a full shell when they don't need it. Yeah, that, that's entirely possible. And that's, of course, the one that kills you. Because when you're playing in a CTF and you're so, you're so like, twitchy, you're working so fast that you miss that one little instruction and you just, you're going you're gonna to feel it later if it doesn't work. That's a, that's a class. Yeah, it's a great example. He will never forget that, though, right? And in fact, I've been on a couple of teams where that was the case. And the rule is you always check that the stack is executable, even if the binary says it's not. A great example being there was a, a Plaid CTF uh, a number of years ago where a challenge, the binary itself did not have an executable stack, but they were running it either under QEMU or under uh, actually hardware. They were running on a piece of hardware, I remember now, that, that did not support hardware depth. And so they were, they, while they thought that stack wasn't executable, we just tried it and it worked. Made that exploit a whole lot easier. So you do have to be careful. Although, I hope nobody tries it here. Because in this particular case, we know for a fact we have tried it. I actually built a payload for mine just to test it. Ran it on the box. The stack is not executable. That will not work. So we've got two IDA, three IDA, 
and I see all the 41s. I definitely give. No, I didn't see any nulls there. We we saw that that comment though. Multiple stir copies from top down could be off on his offsets. Could be off on where the buffer is. Yeah, yeah, he did have the previous one. Uh, there it is. There we go. We're steering our uh, our ladders, generating the full payload. And then we're going to have the exit and trigger it. Connection closed. Oh, that's a good sign. Oh, he ran it without GDB. Well, maybe he just wants to look at the crash log in the, the, the server. You, maybe he just wants to see the register state that comes out in the system system log. It's, it's possible. Uh, now, again, it looks like that even though he's running it in a whole system emulator, I don't actually see anything Android-specific about it. So it may still be a Linux VM, which will work, and it's mostly the same, but again, a few differences like where things are in the file system. So BinSH, List and BinSH. The file system is definitely uh, unusual if you're just used to a regular Linux, uh, Linux system. Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and hop back out. So we, uh, the, the current hypothesis that we're working on right now with PPP is we saw that very fast run through the menus. We saw it laddering off all those to get those nulls into place. Uh, but it looks like the payload's not being put in there right. So the send and receive and the timing and the delay, and there might be some, some, some timing issues and some, or maybe some, some matching issues if he's doing a send and receive waiting for us. So he's off screen there editing uh, his, his payload uh, to get And then we're back to ROP Gadget. Unfortunately, Ode Sober is back looking for gadgets. That previous one was not working. So uh, presumably that, uh, that null laddering is still working. So we saw, we saw a little bit of that payload coming up. But again, that gadget that I said we weren't sure if it was going to work or not might not have actually worked. It's hard. That's, you just kind of got to try it and see. It can be very difficult to, to, to get it straight uh, through there. All right. Uh, interesting. So now we're seeing uh, DefCore looking for gadgets. So DefCore knows the goal. Again, we mentioned it very early on. X0 gets you that uh, gets you the, the argument to system, and then they have already got control over their instruction pointer. They can head straight to system. Okay, so much like an AX versus EAX and X86, it's just the 32-bit register. I'm sure the upper upper 32 bits. If and assuming these pointers, uh oh, we're getting a uh, we're getting a sound. Th Sonic. Oh, excellent. And the, the level exactly. Oh, he's drowning. All right. So that means the rest of the teams are offline, but our four contenders may still battle it out. They're close. They're making progress. Let's go back and check our timeout. Not quite to. Uh, the teams here hopefully know that they can keep working. Oh, that's a good observation. Let's go ahead and call it out for the, 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 the people that may watch the stream remotely. Uh, Defcore is in first. Uh, Odes Sobor is in second. And Plat Parliament Opponent is third on the leaderboard right now of the game. Uh, so we've got a pretty similar representative uh, group here between in our game, that playing the Lumini Challenge, that will, of course, influence the bigger game as well as the, uh, the current actual end-of-day scoreboard. And it's also a bit of a dramatic, too, because the teams don't really know where they're at. Just positions, no scores. No score data, so for three hours. And that's, that's a bit of a tradition every year at the end of the game to kind of... Well, that's a good question. Why not go after it? No, that's what we want them to keep. <laughs> yes, they should do. No, let's keep them to do it. Or uh, conversely, uh, some teams may want to wait till the scoreboard goes off before they unleash, unleash their uh, their Kraken, before they uh, get. Oh, interesting. Well, no, no, but they may hold on to an exploit. They may not throw an exploit that they have until the scoreboard goes dark. It's happened in the past where a team would wait and throw it. But here's the question then, because this year there's a special. Uh, well, the, the, the second, but there's a special uh, announcement. Every time somebody scores, the room, of course, lights up. The scoreboard goes. Are we thinking, thinking that's going to be left going still on the last three hours? Ah, uh, okay. So there still will be indication. Yeah, the audio system is still still doing it. Raw visualizations. Ah, oh, that's that. That makes sense. So. so I, 
condensed down. Yeah, that'll be a lot of fun to see, especially this year's new visualization with all of the, the, the 3D pomp and circumstance that goes with that. So we've got full... Uh, so ex I'm still seeing no X-Zero control. We've got, of course, X-29, X-30, but we had that a while ago. He's working with his script off screen. Yeah, he's trying to, trying to help us out, tell him where he's at. We've got LCBC up here in System Benes H. Okay, so yeah, we're getting... Yeah, it's not really going to help them. Well, it was a hint, but it wasn't a hint as to something to be used in your payload. Yeah, it's unfortunately just turned into too much of a distraction. And it's, in some ways, it's a reasonable guess, because sometimes when you see something fishy that somebody's tried to, to put in, like as a challenge author, you think, oh, maybe they've they put that in there so I can land the bug. Maybe I couldn't land it without this, or maybe it's there for my purpose. Oh, you, you're you just evil like that then. You intentionally like to... Well, it also helps if there's a, a network-based defense, right? And a team is looking for the word flag to go back. You, or if to block it, exactly. You want, that to, uh, you want that to go by on them. Let's go ahead and hop back out. I'm actually going to come off headset very briefly. I'm going to go ahead and check out our uh, challenge uh, server itself that we're running on and uh, see what the battery life is looking on that. Because we didn't mention yet, there is another ticking timer. Uh, once the battery runs out on the device, uh, that's over. Now, the t four teams will get bonus points for participating, uh, at least, just for, I, I believe, was... was oh, okay, that's right. They, got, they already got their points for the first through fourth. Winner take all. So the winner is going to get it. Uh, hopefully they get it before the power runs out. I'll be right back with a brief update on how long power is going to last. So the only downs. Back to the drawing board. So the only downside of a full screen visualizer showing the end of game ready to go is that you can't see the battery life. So it'll be a bit of a it'll be a bit of a mystery until uh, un until it dies. We, we, we could. We could run it uh, on, on, on QEMU um, uh, as, a, as a separate platform, right? We could, we could try it on that. Uh, of course, like I mentioned earlier, that that gets rid of the, uh, the stack protection. And so it does allow uh, them to execute directly on top of the, the stack. Um, so we could, we could do that as well. Certainly would make it easier because they could just hard code a stack address, assuming they could get uh, the stack address of the right version of QEMU. The problem with that is that Running on real hardware is kind of undeniable. It's a real bug. It's a real thing. You know, it's. I I can't wait to show it. I hope we get that chance. It would be disappointing if not. We're gonna go ahead and, and uh, render the the video directly onto the feed, so people will be able to see the exact animation in the feed itself when, when uh, no, not not directly off the screen, but we're actually gonna re-render the video straight to it. Don't tell them when they were cheating. We're gonna tell they cheat on that. Well, because that way we get a higher quality re uh, render on it. So we'll go ahead and do the full render. Uh, the teams there will see it. They'll know it. They'll watch it on uh, on the physical device, and then everybody on the the feed will get to see uh, the, the the live one there as well. So let's go ahead and pop back in, see where we're looking at. Uh, we've got Defcore is over here, looking at the FGITs. and the, again, the FGITs is not, it's not a bad idea to try to reuse the FGITs. It's possible that could work. I, I haven't seen it done. We don't know, uh, but it's an interesting idea. Of, It's a very useful, yeah, exactly. It's kind of like an intermediate, uh, you know, language translation, yeah, exactly, where it's just.
putting it into plain English so you can see what's going on. Uh, so if you just look at the gray to the side there, you'll see sort of explanations of everything. Definitely makes life easier. All right, so again, DefCore was our first place uh, seed, and we're not seeing uh, any more shell access, which is not a good sign. So let's go ahead and hop over to our second place qualifier, LCBC. So we're in Reed. Is that Reed? He had, uh, he had Reed highlight the side, but I don't think it necessarily was Reed there. In the so we've got a ROP uh, dump. There are going to be a lot of rep gadgets. There you go. That's what you're going to want. This is actually how I did it. So I went ahead when I was looking at my gadgets. I literally just did knob junk on the whole binary, rep for ret, and grep backwards with, with grep to, to look for the, and then I would search within this to find X0 or W0, whichever one that I, w I was trying to, to find. So I see a number that, that, that have X0 there again, but I wouldn't be surprised. Although, again, loaded into from what, right? So it's a very, exactly. So you got it, you got it. Yeah, you'd already, you'd already be done. So it's going to be interesting to see who can uh, find that first. Let's pop back in over. Right, in the strings that are being sent, we would see the null bytes. The null bytes are sort of that invisible-ass character that's coming from the stir copy. So he's editing on the, the window that he keeps flipping back to looks like uh, the one that overlays in the middle. Looks like that's the GDB script that he's got. So when he sets his breakpoints on there and then reruns his GDB uh, Oh, I missed that one as well, which was... Uh, oh, interesting. So the symbols, instead of just a slash X that's going to show the binary, he's going to... Yeah, the, oh, that is that is a good one. T-I-L. Today I learned. That's uh, what I'm hoping to see the most of out of this is new techniques, new tricks. Uh, so I can't wait till people start, you know, putting in their payloads. Maybe Maybe they're holding it back. It's possible if they had their shell coding payloads, they didn't want to reveal them on stream. So let's go ahead and go to our next Ode Sober, who started off in the behind, but I would say his is caught up and is as close as anybody else at this point. So we've got a payload of Cat Flag. Someone clearly did not read our instructions. I would, yeah, this is definitely an example of somebody going too fast in too much of a hurry, not reading those instructions. All right, so let's go ahead and flip back to the all view. Uh, we've got some fans uh, cheering on stream for their uh, their favorite person. All right, so we are now one hour and six minutes in. I would have said we had it by 45. I thought for sure we'd have it by an hour. Uh, how close would you say you think people are at this point? I'd hope. I'd hope to find that gadget because it could still be further time, but they've got to figure out their uh, uh, figure out their gadget. Um, but we're going to go ahead and keep an eye on it. I'm 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 convinced PPP has got the the null back off working. I think that's what we're seeing in their payload. I haven't seen it in the GDB, but I but I feel like. All right, let's go ahead. Let's settle this bet. So no nulls in their dumped values. I think the stress of being on stream is slowing them down. I you know I know I wouldn't. I I took me two three hours of. This is good. That's something that Ode Sober needs to do and hasn't yet done. Oh my, we are done. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner for the first live CTF in person. Congratulations. Congratulations to PPP, everyone. The live CTF is over. Take care.